Hello, in this video we are going to see how to update the text for Shopify's checkout. The method we will see in this video will also work with checkout extensibility, so it will not rely on it. So even if you are not on a Shopify Plus plan, you should be able to do this as we will be using theme files instead. So to better illustrate what we are trying to do, this is a standard Shopify checkout and all of the text you see here is what comes by default. For most situations, this will work just fine, but let's say you want to update what this discount page holder says over here, because your store doesn't have gift cards and you think this text could confuse your customers. If you try to approach this from a Checkout UI extension, you will quickly notice that's not possible through that, because Checkout UI extensions can add elements to the checkout, but they rarely can remove or edit what's already there. What we can do instead is edit the theme files, and conveniently Shopify has a UI that lets us do just that in a user-friendly way. So I will go to the store and here for the theme I want to make this change to, I will click on the three dots and click on adding default theme content. From here, I will look for exactly the text I want to change. So I will look for discount code or gift card. And this will show me all of the places where Shopify is rendering this text by default. You can see that right now this is only happening on checkout, but based on the categories we have on the top, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It could be related to the user accounts, for example. However, let's focus on this. I want to make this only say discount code, but I see that there are three fields that have this in the order summary. What I can do is start editing them until I find the one that changes the place with that I want. So let's change this. Refresh here. And this doesn't change it. So I will copy this and paste it here. This is the label. And now this changed it. This looks like a placeholder, but when I click on this and I start typing, you can see that it behaves like a label. So that's why we ended up having to change the label. But you can also change the placeholder just for consistency. And if I refresh this, it should still just say this can come. We can also update text that is dynamic. For example, let's say that we want to change this subtotal over here to say subtotal one product or n products instead of one item or n items. So I can go here and look for subtotal. And the one we are interested in is the one that is in checkout and order summary because this part over here is the order summary. And from here, this, is, this appears to be the one that is rendering this text here as it has the same structure. However, you can see that the number is not hard coded, but it is instead in this count variable. So let's do subtotal, use the count variable, and then set product instead of items, instead of item, and then for more than one product, you are going to say products with an S and save this. Now, if I refresh this, I see here subtotal one product. And if I go back to the store and add anything else to the cart and go to checkout, we are going to see subtotal to products instead of subtotal to items as it will normally show. You can also use this method to remove certain elements. For example, let's say that I don't want this shipping method title to show here. I can look here for shipping method And I can type a white space here and click on save. And now I don't see anything we was shown here. The space is still restart for it because we did our friendly remove the HTML element containing it, but we don't see the text anymore. You can also remove more dynamic elements. For example, this log link, even though it is not just plain text, we can hide it by looking here for login. And here, also using a white space and clicking on save. And we are going to see that the link now is not here. And even if I hover around this, I don't see the click pointer. However, the element is still there. So if I press tab, you can see that over here, I could still go there by pressing tab. However, most customers will not do this. So if you really want to hide that link, this is one way to do it. And if we wanted to revert these or any of the other changes we've made to their original content, 
you don't really have to remember what those fields said. You can just go here to the theme content editor, clear the field, click on save, and you can see here already in the placeholder that it is showing its default text. And if I refresh here, I shall see you once again learning here. And related to removing elements from checkout, what we are seeing here is just for removing text only elements. If you wanted to remove a field from this form or the map that is in the thank you page, this method doesn't do that. And as I mentioned earlier, the changes we made will actually leave in the theme's code base. This editor from here is just a user friendly way of changing the wording. So here I have the original version of this theme. And I will run Shopify theme pool and pass the, the, this development environment. I will select the light theme. And let's give this a moment for it to pull the changes we made. So we can see the difference between what's in here and what is now live. So you can see that only one file changed. And you can see that the changes we made are all reflected here. So we changed the discount code or gift card copy. We changed that to just say discount code. And we changed that three times because we were not sure exactly which field we needed to change for that to show. Then we also changed the subtotal text from here to say products instead of items. And also we removed the shipping method title by replacing its content with a white space. And you can see all of that here. Something to be aware of is that these changes are locale specific. So for example, here you can see that all of my changes are in the English locale file, but none of these other files were modified. This makes sense because you are just changing text and the text changes you make in the English checkout will not be the same text changes you want to make in the Italian checkout, for example. However, keep in mind that if you are hiding elements using the white space trick that we saw, you will have to replicate this change in every other locale you are supporting. Also, something else you can see here is that this is just a JSON file. So if you know the exact name of the property you want to change, you could just do it from here. This is particularly useful if you are working with multiple themes and don't want to go to that editor over and over again. However, I have not seen the full list of property names documented anywhere so to get the name of the properties you need, you will have to at least make the change once, grab the name and replicate it in the other themes. The same goes for these variables like count over here. I have not seen a full list of which fields support which variables. So for now, you will have to rely on whichever variables Shopify was using for this text originally, if any. So there you have it. This is how you can update the wording for the text Shopify shows at checkout or in some other places like customer accounts. If you found this video useful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content and I will see you all in the next one.